The last thing any student expects is to arrive at school to find that one of their classmates has committed a heinous act of violence. Sadly, however, cases like these are not uncommon and have in fact become more prevalent. The following are four such cases in which students have viciously murdered those educators sworn to give them a better life. First up, we have Philip Kism, a 14-year-old student of Massachusetts Denver's high school who was convicted of strangling, raping, and ultimately murdering his ninth grade algebra teacher and beloved educator, Colleen Ritzer. Kism, whom psychologists report say was listening to voices in his head and believed he was a ninja at the time, was asked to stay after school by his 24-year-old instructor. And that's when Kism struck, following Ritzer into the bathroom where he raped and strangled her. After the initial attack, Kism then retrieved a recycling bin from the school's hallway, returned to the scene of the crime, and then placed Ritzer into the bin. According to Kism's defense attorney, it was only after Kism had wheeled Ritzer outside that the fatal stabbings had occurred, bringing the total knife wound count up to a stunning 16. When Ritzer's body was found outside, she was reportedly nude from the waist down. A note reading, I hate you all, was found next to her body. In court, Kism was also convicted of robbery for stealing not only Ritzer's credit card, one of which he used shortly after to attend a movie, but also for stealing her panties. Ugh. Trialed as an adult, Kism was convicted of first-degree murder and faces a lifetime sentence in prison without the opportunity of parole for 15 to 25 years. Shockingly, Kism was acquitted of charges of an additional rape charge which supposedly involved a tree branch and took place near where he left her remains. While awaiting trial, Kism reportedly committed another brutal act of violence when he followed a female State Department of Youth employee into the bathroom to choke and beat her before being stopped by one of the victim's co-workers. As if one heinous crime wasn't enough for Kism, he will face separate charges for the concurrent attack as well. Next, there's the case of 15-year-old Will Cormick, a Corpus Christi College student who viciously stabbed his 61-year-old teacher, Anne McGuire, in the back and neck. Rather than wait until they were alone, Cormick, whose classmates referred to as quiet and academically gifted, seized this opportunity to strike in the middle of class while McGuire was helping another student, even taking the time to wink a fellow student before immediately stabbing McGuire seven times. Somehow, the lifetime educator mustered up the strength to flee the attack after already being stabbed. Cormick raced after his victim, but was stopped by another teacher who barricaded McGuire off in his classroom. Showing absolutely no remorse, Cormick returned to his seat in class, stating that it was a shame that he was unable to kill McGuire, who passed away of her injuries in the hospital later. Continuing his social paddock antics, he went on to describe his post-murderous adrenaline rush. Again, defense attorneys claimed that Cormick's mind was not right and he had been suffering from a mental break. One psychiatrist went as far to state that Cormick's mind was too young and still in development, that there was no way he could have comprehended what he had done. However, Cormick's gruesome actions were clearly premeditated. Only four months before his attack, he told a friend on Facebook about his plan, stating that she deserves more than death, more than pain, and more than anything we can understand. If that wasn't enough to prove some planning went into this, additional students came forward with testimonials that describe how William was planning to kill even more instructors within the school, including a pregnant woman with an unborn child. Post-conviction, Cormick more than lacked empathy, going so far as to state, I wasn't in shock. I was happy. I had a sense of pride, and I still do. An appeal was made on behalf of Cormick to have him trialed as a minor. However, the court in Leeds ruled that his actions were not that of a child, and therefore denied his defense's request. Perhaps one of the most startlingly random acts of violence comes to us from China, where a middle school student only known to the media by Lei monstrously slit his chemistry teacher's throat because his phone had been confiscated. On the previous day, teacher Sun Wu Kang had noticed Lei using his phone during class, at which time Wu Kang took the phone away from him. Even though his phone had been returned to him the following day, nothing stopped Lei from walking up behind Wu Kang while he was preparing his lesson and slitting his throat. Lei fled the scene after his crime and later called an emergency hotline to turn himself in. Though another teacher heard the screams and was quick to call the police, Wu Kang's injuries claimed him before even the ambulance could arrive on the scene. 
Apparently, this vicious act has been kept rather quiet, as the only published statement given on this crime by the school's vice principal who says, The problem between teachers and students is simple. Teachers are strict and students are rebellious. Rebellious or not, one has to wonder if there's more than meets the eye in this case. Lastly, we come to Barcelona, Spain, where a killing so bizarre took place it can only be described as something out of the Game of Thrones. A 13-year-old student at the Joan Foster Institute claimed the life of a teacher with a wooden crossbow loaded with ballpoint pens. Initially, the boy who had not been named targeted a female teacher and her young daughter with a knife. Both suffered minor injuries and were brought to the hospital. Attempting to stop the attack, a male social sciences substitute teacher tried to apprehend the boy, at which time he was fatally wounded by the crossbow, striking his chest, resulting in death. A fellow student was stabbed and injured, but sustained no fatal injuries. Again, we see a crime that could have been prevented. A week before the incident, the boy was telling other students that he had planned to kill every teacher in the school and then himself. Since laws in Spain do not hold minors accountable, the boy was only punished for his crime by his educational system and his parents, which begs the question of what is being done to stop crimes like this from happening in the future. Still, no matter which country you're in, crimes by students are continuing to be more commonplace. It seems that every defense position brings the child's maturity into question, claiming that children of an adolescent age do not have the capacity for premeditation. Well. Whether you feel that teens should be tried like adults or not, one thing has been made abundantly clear. Perhaps these minds were not fully formed, but these young murderers' intentions undoubtedly were. Ooh, well, I hope these kids didn't kill your mood. If not, go to our channel because we have a lot more videos in store for you, like the five awkward Pokemon Go moments. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe.